Hi class! So let us now begin with our discussion on designing the architecture of the software. Okay. Um, take note, by the way, class, that the design process, again, is iterative. I believe that I, um, I told you or I discussed that one in the previous, uh, in the previous um, design concept video lecture that I made. And also, uh, we start off, uh, we need to start off by identifying uh, the abstraction of the software. And this abstraction, by the way, it's what we call the ar architectural design. Also, each of the iterations and also the elements of the, arch uh, of the architecture of the software should be elaborated. And also, it should be also the same with other elements um, that I discussed in the design concepts before and also um, I would like to emphasize um, about this one um, I know that um, you will get confused um, about the difference or if ever that I will discuss about the architectural or the software architecture and also the software design by the way um, they are both different but um, they have similar features okay so if we will talk about the software architecture uh, which I believe this is the topic right now that I am trying to explain um, basically we are actually focusing on developing the skeleton and high-level infrastructure of the software so if we will talk about the software design um, it constant uh, it concentrates on the code level design okay it addresses the problems like the functions of individual modules um, the scope of classes the purposes of different functions and everything or etc okay so don't worry about the um, about that one because we will learn a lot more um, about software engineering if you will just um, um, understand this topic okay so let's proceed so we define architecture design or architectural design as a representation of the structure of data and program um, components that are required to build a computer-based system. Just like what I mentioned earlier, um, our, an architectural design is actually a structure. Okay, it is actually a structure of the um, of the components or what we call. Uh, the data or what we call components um, that should be required for us to build a, uh, a software or an application okay so in other literatures um, they describe architectural design as the template on how developers should arrange all the developed components of the projects okay so why um, architectural design is important first um, the representation or actually the architectural design it facilitates um, communication among all stakeholders okay so you will um, actually appreciate the um, the purpose of the architectural design if you can see the um, if you can see the design itself because um, it will help us um, communicate with other uh, with um, with our stakeholders okay next um, it highlights early design decisions that will have a profound um, impact on all software engineering work that follows so basically um, it will give us an alert or it will give us a notification or it will give us uh, uh, it will inform us that um, there might be a risk that will happen soon but if ever um you will not have you will not have this kind of risk if ever that your architectural design it's well organized or well structured okay lastly it constitutes a relatively small intellectually graspable so it means um this is easy model of how um, the system is structured and how its components work together so on how this component interacts with other components like that one 
Okay. So let us first take a look at uh, an, an example. Um, this is an um, architectural design example and some of the notations that are used in the representation. Uh, I basically got uh, we actually we got this one from the internet uh, this is an example of a emergency response um, architectural um, design so when we say architectural design it uses a components to refer to functions that the software needs to produce or manage so if we are talking about a components basically these are the components Okay, these are the components. So we have, if you can see here, um, for example, in the web service component, it has a subsystem inside it. You can see it here. Also here in the information service subsystem, it also has its own components. Okay, so in this example, uh, we see several, uh, several components to different layers of the architecture. So from data layer going to the presentation layer. Each component holds a specific functions that are needed for the software to perform successfully as intended. Okay, so for example, in the web service component, um, it holds an information inquiry service. It has a subsystem also this one it has a news release service like that one so those are the components present uh, based on this um, example after we talk about the components uh, we need also to talk about the connectors okay um, there are also connectors that enable a communications between components from other components so if we will talk about a connector this is a good example of a connector, this one. Basically, it connects data layer mm, going to the service layer, okay? The connectors, uh, the connectors by the way, guys, um, can be afforded by, uh, by say, for example, the database management system use or um, the development technology that is utilized, such as in the case of frameworks or um, the connectors can be programmed as service components to allow communication among several other components okay so again if we will talk about the connectors it will help us um, communicate from one component to the other components okay so just like for this example um, this um, connector it helps um, the data layer to communicate to service layer like that one next we need to talk about the constraints okay constraints is a notation that sets a boundary among components or the software itself to show how the components may be integrated to form a subsystem of a major component so basically, um, it will help us. Um, um, it will help us to um, to integrate um, one component of a subsystem to a major component of, of the other subsystems, like that one. Another one. We also have the architectural design. It also has a semantic model. Uh, by the way, um, for the constraints, this could be also a constraint, an example of a constraint. Sorry, I forgot. Because before it, the before um, the data layer will proceed to the next layer, there should be a constraint that will happen here. Okay, so for example. Um, uh, before you will proceed to the next layer you need to um, uh, you really need to um, complete this specific task or you should have this um, this type of data before you will proceed to the next layer for example that's only for an example okay 
So let's go back to the semantic model. Um, the, the semantic model, it actually enables the designer to understand the overall properties of the system by analyzing the no properties of the constituent parts. Okay, this means, um, uh, the meaning of this one, um, design actually gives us an overview of how the software is going to be developed. So it is an abstraction or actually it's, it's actually a blueprint that will help the software engineers develop the software by considering each component parts. Okay? That's the semantic model. Okay, since it has some degree of abstraction, just like what I said earlier, um, if we will talk about the architectural design, um, architectural design does not specify the internal properties of the software. These, in turn, are details and produced in iterations and while each component is elaborated. Okay? Um, this is also true for, uh, for our house building metaphor um, earlier, right? Um, we build the, the blueprint of the house, but the exact details of the door, colors, um, the electrical wirings, the material types uh, are not yet clear at the beginning. So just the major components of the house architectures are known. Um, that that we have uh, for example we have four entryways uh, we have three bedrooms uh, one um, uh, one master bedroom then two bedrooms then one maid quarter for example um, we also have a hallway and etc okay now in building houses um, there are some architectural styles that you, that can be followed okay so for example the house can be a bungalow type. Um, we also have modern type of house or style. We also have ranch type. We also have Victorian. Uh, we also have count, uh, country, French, and also etc. Okay, so each architecture have unique features that are common to all houses built following the architecture. So meaning even though that you are using your own style um, there's actually still a common denominator between them okay um, common features would be the type of windows for example um, and the ceiling height um, number of stories for example your um, two-story building for your house um, type of roofs type of roofs and also facade and many others okay um they may be painted differently arranged differently but the common features are actually there okay so this is also true for software architectures by the way guys um each computer based system or an application is built following one of many architectural styles so it really um it, it is not mandatory that you will follow the standard type of the architectural design but um, it is good if you will um, you would still follow um, some components in that standard so that you will also have a good outcomes for your um, for your architectural design. Okay?